let's face it, everybody knew I was going to fall behind on this. Even more so than I already was. This next film is Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed from 1969. Now, this is a Hammer production, which means it's not going to be necessarily a faithful adaptation, but it will be a very interesting interpretation. And in fact, it is a damn fine one. I really would have to say that the shining point about this is the characters, which I suppose goes without saying when it comes to a Hammer production. I found that the... All were excellent, except for one, but I'll get to that. Frankenstein in this one is a very different interpretation than what you might have seen from the original adaptation, which, that was a man who wanted to preserve life, and was seeking dead bodies, ones that had already passed away, in order to create his first successful for lack of a better term, monster, but it was supposed to be the archetype for what would later be the future of mankind. This Frankenstein is far more violent, manipulative, and driven. He is a man who wants to preserve the talents and geniuses of the world and cares more about them than life. And he is willing to take whatever lives he has to, to get the resources he needs. This is a very interesting alteration from what we've seen, and Peter Cushing was the perfect fit for this. He manages to come off as disarmingly gentle when you first see him, but as you begin to understand him and spend more time with his character, you realize that that is a facade in the greatest sense of the term. He is very dangerous. Far more than Henry Frankenstein in the uh, in 1932 film. I believe it was 1932. It might have been a different year, but the thing is this is a particularly good way of looking at it because you're really villainizing him at the first the first adaptation was a tragedy this one is more of a madman's need to move on in his work and i actually forgot to tell you what the whole story is behind this frankenstein has had to leave his country he has essentially had to flee because of the controversy around his work and now he's trying to find a partner or collaborator that he had exchanged information with by mail, but needs to get a hold of him because he has perfected a technique for brain transplant that Victor really needs. That plot point, however, seems a little strange, considering... well... Let's just say it seems like he doesn't actually need that secret once you see the film. You'll find out. Getting back to the high points of this film, the music and environments are moody and draw you in. The sets are really colorful, but they also have this grit and grime about them while still having a tremendous splash and variety of color. It's not, it's not sleepy hollow dark, it's more like if you wanted to go between the Wizard of Oz and Sleepy Hollow, somewhere in there, you'd get that, you'd get that here. And the plot has a lot of twists and turns, and there are really tense scenes. Except for one. <laughs> you will know it when you see it. That one was... Uh, I know they wanted to be disturbing, but that was hilarious. If you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if this is a particularly good or bad point, but it feels longer than it really is. I don't know if that's to say it's slower or there's just so much that's happening in here. It feels like it's taken a... like you've had a lot more going on. I guess I could count that as a positive because there are too many films where it just drags ass and you just want it to be over. This one, you just can't believe that so little time has passed. There is one really good thing about this as far as something really disturbing goes. The sound department. They had a masterful choice in what they used for the sounds of the surgical instruments. Oh, I, that was really hard to sit through. I had to actually pause the film because the sounds of these hand tools being used against the human body was really getting under my skin, figuratively speaking. I would say if you if you have a weak stomach, you might not want to have you might not want to watch this unless you've got earplugs. <sighs> now, there is only one real problem I have with the film. And that is how weak and feeble Anna is. I could have understand... I could have understood if she had become more complacent after a very pivotal and violent scene... But she always seemed that way, and not even after that scene, which I will not go into spoilers on. She doesn't feel like she's changed much at all. She still feels like the same person, it's just now she's slightly more afraid. I feel that this could have been done better. If she had started off as a bit stronger of a character, and then that event really changed her, it would have had a more dramatic effect, and I think the audience would appreciate it more. It would also make the impact of the event more... It would make it... Uh, well, okay, it might make things a bit too intense, but this was ratcheted up to like 12 on the intensity for what they could get away with in 1969. So... My rating is an 8.5 out of 10. This is an excellent film and a fantastic work from horror, from Hammer Horror. Now, as for the 31 Day Challenge, I actually made up some ground on this because we've now got a Hammer Horror film. We've got the last of the first time watches. This was made in the UK, so that's another country down. And since it was done in 1969, I can check off one of the films from the years that and in nine so yeah that's a real good way of catching up and making some real headway uh next up we're gonna have a uh, a little trek into sorority house massacre oh god see you then